everyone, it's Tyler Michelle Stroik from Universal Rackets, and this is going to be an amazing video. Do you know why it's going to be an amazing video? Because we're going to be teaching you an assortment, a variety of tips and tricks for you to improve your serve. Once again, once you get done this whole video, you are going to learn so many more tips and more tricks for you to improve your serve. Your serve's gonna be more consistent. You're gonna have more spin, more control. You're going to be more accurate. And most importantly, you are going to have more confidence and you are going to win more points. Now, why is the serve so essential in pickleball, Michelle? Because the serve sets up the point. If you can hit a deep, nice, great serve, you're gonna be faster up to the kitchen and then that's where all the points are won. And you're going to be playing in a, a tournament soon. Yes, uh, you're going next to be, weekend. Yeah, it's coming up fast. So we're going to be wa walking you through all these tips. Okay. The one thing that I want to say prior to starting this video is not one size fits all for pickleball tips. So we're going to give you 10, 15, 20 amazing tips. Mm -hmm. Not everyone's going to work, but I want you to go through, understand, and try to apply every single one to your game and see which one works for you. And once again, if you stay tuned for this whole video, you are definitely going to instantly improve your serve. So should we get started? Yes. Let's go. So the first category that we are going to go over is to get more power on your serve. Mm -hmm. Many beginner intermediate club level players, they struggle with power or returning power. So a little bit more power on that serve is going to make it so more effective, okay? Mm -hmm. So the first thing that we're going to go over, the first tip is I want you to hold your paddle loose. Now you're going to be like, really Tyler, that's the first tip that you gave me right now. I'm going off this YouTube. No, you wanna hold the paddle loose. If you can let the paddle work for you and not work for the paddle, the better it's going to be. A lot of players, they struggle with hitting big serves. And the reason why is because they grip their paddle super tight. And if you grip your paddle super tight in pickleball, it's not going to be right. I'm going to show you right here. Players, they grip the paddle super tight because they want to get the ball in. So they grip it super tight and what do they have to do? If they hit super hard, where's that ball going? It is going long every single time. So now in order to get it in and keep the point going, what do they have to do? They have to slow their serve down. And basically what they do is they hit a ceiling with their serve. They have to keep their acceleration down so they can keep the ball in. By you being loose right now, mm -hmm. serving with the paddle super loose, you're going to be able to raise the ceiling for your serve. Not only for power, but consistency, control, spin, and accuracy. Mm -hmm. So stick your paddle straight out real quick to me. Perfect, you passed the test. Do you know why you passed the test? Because I do this to you all the time. Mm -hmm. I just have to say before we keep on going, the pink matches the skirt. Love that, did you plan that right there? I did not plan I that. need a new wrap job on mine as well. I so, got you. Um, I would love uh, to do that in return for these amazing tips I give you. I'll wait for my $50 Venmo. But here's the thing, stick the paddle straight out. Nine times out of 10, if I came up to you right now and you struggle with your serve or you don't hit as much power that you want as possible, if I came up to your paddle and I tried to take it out of your hand, it wouldn't come out because you're gripping it too tight. On a scale to one to 10, 10 being a death grip, one being it's literally falling down, you want a, let's say one and a half, two and a half, maybe three, you want to be as loose as possible. Now, everyone can't be a one, two, or a three, mm -mm. but I want you to be a level looser than you already were before. So Michelle, when you normally hit your serve, and especially in this tournament, nerves, you're gonna be getting nervous, what level are you typically, you feel like? I always hold the paddle way too tight. Scale like one to 10. Five. five. Okay, yeah. so what we're gonna do is we're gonna be a four. Mm -hmm. For this video and for this video purposes, yeah. I want you to be a one or two. I want you to serve right now. I'm gonna give you a couple can balls. Can I take my other fingers off like we did for the drive? You can do that, yeah. You can do that. And will help me drop my paddle too. So what do you mean by that? What's like a... You told me before to practice keeping my paddle loose to take to just use my two fingers and a thumb to serve. Yes. And for to hit a drive to keep it loose in my hand. So that's a great drill to do by just gripping your paddle with your middle, middle finger, index finger, and your thumb. Now you're gonna serve. You're mm -hmm. going to not care about the result. You're mm -hmm. just going to work on being fully loose. Okay. Are you ready? Ready. Let's go, come on. Seriously, what if I actually serve like this and it's amazing? Here we are, let's go. Being loose. Nice. Good. Whoa.
One more. Good. How's it feeling? Loose as ever. Good. I like it. Perfect. Am I dropping it below the ball too? You are dropping it below the ball. And you can notice that you are getting spin on your shots as well. Nice. So not only you're getting more power, but you're getting more shape and more consistency on your shots mm -hmm. because you're allowing, by holding the paddle loose, you're going to be able to drop the paddle and it's going to be able to brush up on the ball, get below the ball prior to contact so you can hit that spin. It's impossible to do that if you hold your paddle tight because then you yeah. come straight through the ball and it's flat every time. If you want spin, you have to hold it loose so we can get under the ball. Yes, and I want you to think, paddle tight, look where my paddle is. It's up, so now when I make contact, it's flat. Paddle loose, it automatically drops it, so now I can swing up. Yeah. Also, once you get to those final rounds, you know you're going to be having those referees that are going to make all these calls for you. Mm -hmm. They're going to be watching you, so you have to make sure you make contact below the hip. Mm -hmm. And by holding the paddle loose, you are always going to have a legal serve. Now, the next thing that I want to do with power for you mm -hmm. is we can make this so much better. Okay. Do you think you're hitting the ball super hard? No. No? The reason why is because you're holding your paddle loose, but now I don't want you to just have momentum. I want you to put your momentum in an actual place. Okay. And what I mean by that is I'm exaggerating right now, okay? Mm -hmm. But you're serving, you're loose, and you're picking your body up. Once you're done and during your serve, I want you to hold your paddle loose and keep your body down and forward. I want you to pretend that there's a laser shining from your chest. You want the laser pointing downward. You don't want the laser pointing forward. You don't want it pointing upward. Okay. So again, once you're done, you're going to finish with your body forward. Okay. Are you ready? I think so. Here we are. Let's go. Let's see what I'm happens. I'm an offender of doing this finish many times. with your body forward. Whoa. Was that better? Good. <laughs> Good. Still up. Two more. Little goes a long way. One more. Perfect. I love your mom necklace, by the way. Thank you. And your M for Michelle. Thank you. You look amazing. Poor mom. Look good. I love it. All right, so we're doing that. You're holding the paddle a little bit tight because you were thinking about going forward. You need to make sure that you hold the paddle loose. That's why we started with that tip. But you're getting your body more into it. Mm -hmm. And you said, is it, you said you're still a little bit up. Mm -hmm. Even if you think about a little goes a long way. Right. So now you're pointing it forward. The next tip that I want you to get is I want you to think that you are swinging more forward and through the ball. Okay. Once again, when you swing, I want you to think, go to hit your serve real quick. When you swing and take your paddle back, if you're hitting a deep serve and one with height, you're going to swing up. Mm -hmm. But right now we're swinging power. So I want you to think this is where you make contact, out in front and away from your body. Mm -hmm. But instead of just making contact with one ball, I want you to make contact with two balls, three balls, and then follow through. Okay. Once again, I don't want you to think that you're just making contact with one pickleball. I want you to think that you're making contact with two, three, three balls out in front, and then I want you to mm -hmm. follow through. You okay. want to swing more forward than swinging up. The more height, the more deeper that you want to hit, the more up you want to swing if you want that type of lob serve. But if we're working for power right now, you want to hit through that court, mm -hmm. you need to make sure that you're swinging forward and then up. I want you to swing more out. Any questions about that? Uh, no questions. Let's just see if I can do it. Here we are. So I want you to think again that you're hitting through three balls, swing forward, and out. Ooh. Good. One more. Forward. Nice. Good, good, good. Now, the next thing I want you to do, we're going to put it all together, is we have to make sure that we exaggerate our follow through for our serves. Okay. You right now, you're following through, you're following through all the way over your shoulder. Uh -huh. And if you don't already follow through, by following through with your serve, it's going to get you so much more power. Once again, a lot of players, they stop a contact, they can't hit a high serve. That ceiling that I mentioned, by fully following through, that's going to allow you to keep the ball in the court, utilize your momentum, let the paddle work for you, and hit more power. So once you're done, I want you to think, once you follow through, that you're not forcing the follow through, that you're letting your paddle get here as a result. Okay. There's a big difference if you're following through. I'm not arming it. I'm letting my paddle get here as a result. 
Okay. Okay. So try to let your paddle just end up over your shoulder every single time. Look at that serve. That would have aced me. Spin. <laughs> and for the record, I am not aiming anywhere. I'm just doing whatever he's telling me to do. Let's I didn't go. aim for the line over there. Really? No, I no, I don't. You should have told everyone you did. Here we are. <laughs> Let's go. One more. Look at that. One more. Okay. Still a little bit tight. Mm -hmm. One last tip I'm going to give you for the power component. Mm -hmm. And these tips I'm giving you for power and I'm gi giving everyone for power, this can work for power, but this is also going to help you for accuracy, spin, control, and confidence as well. So they all go together. Mm -hmm. It's like one big, beautiful serve recipe. What we are going to do is you're going to breathe when you hit. That last one, you are holding your breath while you hit. Mm -hmm. If you wanna relax your body, let it loose, let yourself fully extend, you need to exhale when you serve. This is going to go for more of a confidence and when we get into a routine component of our serve, mm -hmm. but I want you to think that you're inhaling on the take back and then exhaling while you follow through. So you go to serve again, inhaling on the take back, <laughs> exhaling, follow through. Let's try one more time. Inhaling on a take back, exhaling and following through when you hit. Let's go, let's hear that breathing. Let's see what happens. Good. Don't injure yourself before your tournament, babe. One I'm more. thinking about everything else. Here we go. Good. And that's a big thing. We are giving you guys so many tips right now. There's so many things to think about. When you guys are applying these tips to your overall game, I want you to think about one or two tips at a time. Don't put them all together or you're going to start thinking too much, you're going to start missing, and you're going to become a robot. So the best way for this training session, I want you to apply and do it the same way that we're doing it, is you focus on one tip, do it a little bit, and then go to the next tip do it a little bit. The reason why we start out with the looseness is you need that looseness to apply all these tips. It's like you have to crawl before you walk. Mm -hmm. Now, we are going to give you one more great tip after the breathing for power, mm -hmm. and that's going to be, and you do this so well, I think, is loading and exploding. A main reason why players struggle with power on their serve is because all of their weight is forward. This is why they have arm, elbow, shoulder pain, because all their weight's forward on their serve. They go to serve and then watch what happens. All their weight's on their front foot. Mm -hmm. Instead of their weight being on their front foot with them just using their arm, I'm going to use my momentum and my looseness. So instead of starting on my front foot, I'm going to start on my back foot and then I'm going to go forward into my front foot. That was a good one. Really so again, good. instead of starting on my front foot, I want you to think that you're going to start on your back foot and then go into your front foot. Mm -hmm. I want you to think that you are loading on your back leg and exploding on your front leg. When you load on your back leg, I want all your weight to be on your back foot that you could pick your front foot up. And then what you're going to do is you're going to shift it forward and explode forward onto your front foot. And that pivot he did at the end is a perfect way to transfer that weight from the back to the front. The pivot. How oh, you went like this. Yes, and that's going to be rotation. And as always, you read my mind before I say it, and that's going to be the next tip. Okay. Rotation is huge. And why do you like rotation so much? I need rotation for power because I can put all my weight back here, but if I'm not transferring and rotating before the paddle comes, it's all arm for me. Yeah. And I know that about my game. And you do sometimes arm your serve too I much. Do. And don't we all, I arm my serve Because I well. want it to be deep. Yes. And it's called compensation and that's not good. So, should we go? Yeah. Let's go, here we are. So I want you to think again, you are loading and exploding on your serve. And think about it, if all of my body weight is back here and then I transfer it Where's it going? Behind the ball. So I'm taking all of my body weight and putting it behind the ball. So that's gonna to have to give me more power than just going like this. Looking good. Good. One more, really feel it in your legs. One more.
That was good on my legs, but I still lifted up my body. So just a little bit goes a long way. So yeah. keep on thinking about that. Can't do everything that. perfect today. And maybe what you can do is if you feel like the number one thing that you do is pop your body up, yeah. add do that as the main priority tip, Yeah. and then add another tip onto that. Breathing, keeping my body and the weight in the back, transferring to the front. Gotta do this, Always that, 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 this, I mean, this, it's that, only 12 that. things, but this serve is still way, way, way easier to learn than a tennis serve, because that was a nightmare for me to learn. Yes. And that's how you play pickleball now. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> And again, are you improving your serve by just thinking about these things? Of course. I was going to say, why don't we talk about, <laughs> well, you, we talked about the rotation, right? We're getting into the rotation. Oh, you're still there. Okay. Then I, the thing that I want to bring up is when you're completely done giving all the tips for the, this type of serve. I wanted to talk about a different type of serve. Perfect. Next. We can go over to open stance serve. Yeah. It's been a minute. However, though, the thing is, is a lot of you guys already do these things naturally, regardless of how good or bad you think your serve. A lot of people, they're like, oh, I'm not good at serving. I'm not where I want to be. Mm -hmm. You guys auto automatically do these types of techniques, but we are just thinking about them now. We are applying them in a controlled setting. So it's not like I'm recreating and, and this famous serve guru. I mean, maybe I could be. You have a great serve, Ty. Yes, but the thing is, is I'm getting you to be more aware and think about more of these things over and over again. Yeah. So now we are going to get into rotation and rotation equals power. Rotation and acceleration equals consistency, power, and more spin. The more you can rotate, the better you are going to be mm -hmm. and you can achieve consistency. Easy as one, two, three. Do, re, me. A, B, C. Okay. Don't crunch. Okay. So <laughs> well, when we really rotate flat. with our body, I want you to think for the serve, and we're going to do the closed stance first, and then Michelle can think about the open stance. But when we rotate for our body, we're not only loading in my back leg, but when I load in my back leg, I want you to think about where my hips are facing. My hips are facing the side. Now, when I proceed throughout my swing, watch when I explode forward, watch where my hips are going to face. They are going to face forward. Now, a lot of players, they struggle with rotation, and it's because of this one little minuscule tip. Do you want to know what it it's is? It's probably going to be incredible for me. I can't wait to hear it. Guess. What do you think it is? Pivoting. Yeah. But why? Because their front toe is pointed towards where they want to hit. Players, their front toe, when they're serving, is pointing straight ahead to where they want to hit. Now, look. My hips are already out of whack because my toe's pointing where it should go. You would think that, right? And then you go and serve and you're using all of your arm. I want you to, if you're a right-handed player, I want you to point your front toe to the right net post. If you're a left-handed player, I want you to point your front toe to the left net post. You want an imaginary line pointing directly towards your dominant side net post. So notice again, the tip of my toe is the laser is pointing directly towards that net post. This facing forward, now I'm just using all my arm and shoulder. Mm -hmm. Now, since I'm pointing this towards the post, look, now I have rotation to work with. Mm -hmm. The more you can rotate, another thing as well is I don't want you to just go back. I want you to go back and coil in your core. Again, you're gonna go back but then also you're going to twist a little bit. Think of yourself or your core as a sponge. You're coiling and uncoiling. So by coiling, pointing your toe and going back and thinking that you're really rotating like a sponge and then you're exploding, that's going to get you power as well. Now, do I do too much of this in my serve? Too much like of I swing? like this. You know, like I make like a C, like a tennis thing. I feel like when I saw you, you just took your paddle like this and then you just dropped it. I go like this. That's probably too much. Why? Too many different like components and so why do you think that? Up on. Why do I do it? Yeah. I have no idea. Because you don't rotate. You just said that you lack rotation. I do. A little bit. So you have to compensate with your big swing. So if I turn my whole body, I'm already back here. I think I do this too because I know my weight's coming back here. So I kind of take my paddle and I'm like guiding my weight, but I'm not necessarily turning my body and using my core. And everyone, this is a huge thing and this is what we have to get over. A big serve necessarily isn't from the big swing. <laughs> it is from the rotation. Rotation equals power. Rotation equals acceleration, which then equals power. And you know what a cool thing about this channel is? You have actual, this is pickleball with Tyler, but the OG is tennis with Tyler. And all of these tips come from his tennis coaching, which was some of the best in the world at some point, right babe? Wow. 
wasn't it? That meant so much to well, me. Well, because the serve, this is all tennis stuff, and a lot of these people, maybe they didn't play tennis, and they wouldn't know these things. I, I played a little bit of tennis, but I didn't know all those things for the serve. Yeah, perfect. So now we are going to be addressing the back foot pivot that you were talking about prior. Now the back foot pivot is a great type of mechanic to do to allow your hips to instantly rotate. We're thinking about rotation. We're putting ourselves in the proper position for rotation, mm -hmm. but now we have to actually execute it. Okay. So what you need to do is you need to, when you serve, you need to think not only about your hips, but your back foot. By pivoting your back foot, it's going to automatically allow your hips to rotate properly. So again, when I go hit a big, powerful serve, watch my back foot. When I hit this, watch again, I'm pivoting my back foot. I wanna think my hips are facing to the side, my hips are facing forward. My hips are facing to the side, my hips are facing forward. My back foot is here, and then I'm squashing the bug and throwing my hips forward. Okay. Now, a big thing that players ask when you tell them about how to line up to the serve properly is where should their back foot go? If you're hitting a closed stance serve, you don't want their back foot super back. You don't want your back foot in front of your front foot. You either want your back foot at in line with your front foot or a tiny bit behind that there is a direct line pointing over there. If you're on the other side, a lot of players say, well, what about the other side? It's the exact same thing. If I'm serving over here, I'm on the left side, I don't want to get out of the camera, I'm going to still do this, and it's going to naturally go there. So let's see. Let's see pivoting your back foot, utilizing all the proper mechanics, and let's see what we got. Look at that. <laughs> Two more. Pivot that back foot. Load, pivot, and explode. Nice. One more. Try to keep your body down a tiny bit more. Okay. Let's call the uh, Miami tournament and order that engraved gold medal now because <laughs> this serve is going to be call my partner first. so amazing. Hi, uh, put Michelle Stroyek, uh for first place <laughs> engraved and uh, Gabby Leon. Leon. Yes, put her down. But yes, yeah, so if you can utilize this rotation, you can either think to your hips or pivot by putting yourself in the proper place, utilizing being loose, exhaling, accelerating, following through, keeping your body forward, you will automatically have so much more power. Do you agree? Yes. Okay, so we spoke about power. Now let's talk about accuracy. Okay. We're gonna be talking about where to locate your serve. Now, Michelle, where do you normally want to locate the serve? Or what do you think when you're serving in pickleball. Deep into their backhand. Tell us more about it while I go and check that we're still recording because we were doing this before and our camera shut off. Okay. So also sometimes you just have to read who you're serving to. A lot of times people do not favor their backhand so they're gonna move all the way over to show you that if you go to their backhand they're gonna be here or they're gonna come all the way to this side. If someone's standing all the way to this side I'm going up the T to them to make sure that they're gonna be more challenged since they're kind of like cheating in a way. Um, ideally, across the board though, you want a deep serve because the deeper the serve is, the more they're gonna to have to move back to return the ball and then your third shot is going to be a lot easier and can be more aggressive. I personally like aiming down the middle because 80% of players, not sure if that's a valid statistic, will prefer their forehand over their backhand. Yeah. So the right side of the box is a right-handed player's backhand if I am on the right side. If I'm on the left side serving, it would be out wide. Mm -hmm. So always aim to their backhand. You're playing a righty, the right side of the box, wherever you're serving is their backhand, lefty, left side of the box. Another great serve though is go over there real quick, like stay on the camera, so right over there. Mm -hmm. If my opponent has an amazing drive, what I can do for, to get their drive for the third shot, and I use this when I play with players again who absolutely drill, like Nate McLean. Mm -hmm. He'll drill that forehand, right? What I do is I will serve out wide. I'll try to pull my opponent fully off the court. And what it's going to do is it's going to force my opponent to go and hit a ball more in the middle. Again, it's really difficult to hit a super angled shot. So a great hack that you can do is pull them out wide off the court. They're over there. And then what are they going to do? They're going to hit you a ball here 
and you can take that third shot and put it anywhere you want. You mean you do that with Nate's your partner? Yes. Because you know he is going to hit the drive. Because I know you have a strong forehand. Gotcha. So, right, you have a strong forehand again. Mm -hmm. I go here. I'm going to serve them out wide. Here we are. Boom. And then you're going to get a third shot around here that you can drive. Gotcha. So that's a great tip to do as well. Now, how do we aim in pickleball? It's very simple. Wherever you point your paddle, your body, and your momentum to, the ball is going to go. What I mean by that is if I swing and I want to go down the middle, all I'm going to do is swing and follow through and look, point my body down the middle. Mm -hmm. If I want to go out wide, all I'm going to, to do is when I swing, I'm going to point my body and everything out wide. Another great underrated place to serve is to the actual middle of the opponent's rectangle. What I mean by that is a lot of players, they think that they're either going to go out wide or they're going to go over here. If you can get a ball deep into the middle and that opponent doesn't know how to move back or adjust, mm -hmm. they're going to get jammed as well. Mm -hmm. An angle creates angle. So if you can go to the middle of your opponent, that's going to eliminate angle and they're going to give you a more middle shot as well. Mm -hmm. Which kind of contradicts what I said before but it's super difficult to go out wide. It's just another strategy. Yeah, just different strategies to do, mm -hmm. just to address the common haters. Okay. But again, what I'm going to do is if I want to serve out wide, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to serve, and once I'm done, watch, if there was no net, I'm not moving at all, I could walk directly towards where I served that ball. Did the ball dramatic. end up here? Probably. Okay? If you ever miss and you're like, oh, I wonder why I missed or like where is my body going? If you can't get the ball in the box, see, when you walk to a lot of players, they'll miss out wide and they could walk towards out wide. Mm -hmm. If I want to go down the tee, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to serve. Here we are. Okay, so that wasn't super down the tee, but look, if I walked, I'd walk directly towards that. So what do I have to do? I have to walk a little bit more towards the center. I have to make sure I align my body a little bit more towards the center. Here we are. Most serve. And look, if I walked, I'd walked directly where I'd want. I want my body. I want my follow through. I want my momentum pointing towards where I want to go. So we're going to work on our placement. We have no clue who we're playing in the Miami Open. And we're going to work on going down the tee now. Okay? So I'm going to get a target, and all you're going to do, again, is point your momentum towards the T. Once again, when you serve, I want you to point all of your momentum towards the T. Once you're done, walk towards it. Excuse me, Miami Open, please give her a gold medal. That was so good. Thanks, babe. And what did you do? I had no idea I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why players, they think aiming is so difficult in serving everyone. I just everyone. give up on it. It's not difficult. It's not difficult at all. All you have to do is point your momentum and everything to that spot. And it's that easy. Look at that. What you're going to do is you're going to train with targets over and over again. So then when you play, you're going to visualize the targets are actually there. You're going to have the confidence and just aim at your imaginary target. And it's so interesting, too, because you've given me like a hundred different things to think about to improve my serve. And at the end of the day, when I just hit that ball deep to that bag, I didn't once think hit the ball deep to the bag. I thought about breathing in, breathing out, putting my momentum to the body or to the bag, to the target, rotating, squashing the bug. I didn't think of hit the ball to that spot. So it's everything else. You just kind of like trust in your serve at some point and know that you're doing the right thing and then magically it goes where you want you just let it end up there by yeah. doing the right thing it's like just less control on your part because you have more information and more habits and more practice of doing the right thing instead of compensating like i used to i mean i still do it with my arm and what is my favorite quote in pickleball to gain control you have to give up control in pickleball to gain control you have to give up control the more you let the paddle work for you and the less you work for the paddle the better you will be and that's what it and is. And if I can do this serve, every single person watching this can do this serve. And it's by utilizing the right mechanics and not just trying to get the ball in. Mm -hmm. Now we hit the T, I kind of want to like stick with that. So let's go to the middle and then let's go out wide. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> All right, so again, we are going to go to the middle. Tell them about what you're thinking now going to the middle. Going to the middle, I'm lining my feet up the way they're supposed to be. Like Tyler told me, rotating through my core, loading, pivoting. And this is a and great underrated right spot. When I keep them together, it makes me twist in my core more, so we're gonna go with that. 
Oh no. Okay, stop, stop, stop. Walk to where you'd hit. Okay. <laughs> Feel like you rotate after. Here we are, try again. So even if you miss the next one, think about where did you end up? Good, let's do one more. So utilizing this where you end up not only helps you get the serve, but it helps you problem solve why. Now for that one where Michelle missed, she actually over rotated, which is good because we went over rotation, but still it helps you a ton. Let's do one more, come on. We're training for the tournament, I wanna hit that bag. Get your body, walk to it. Come on, walk to it, walk to it, walk to the bag. Oh, come on, that was down the middle. One more and walk to me once you're done. Okay. Here we are. <laughs> you're gonna stay right there? Yeah. Walk. Not responsible for what happens. Here we are. Walk to me, walk to me, walk to me, walk to me, walk to me. Good. And look, that was close to the middle. Are you ready to go out wide? Yeah. Let's go. I was going to say walk to me and give me a kiss, but I want to keep it uh, PG. <laughs> Here we are. This way. Good. Be loose. Let your body end up there. Don't force it. Let your body end up there. Don't force it. Hey, good. One more, one more. Play it out. I want to play out a point real quick. I've been resting my shoulder. I haven't played pickleball for like two days. So I feel good, even though it should be like probably two weeks. One more, one more, one more. And this is what happens, right? You think about so many things and you end up tightening up. Just again, end up here, that's it. All right, so we have to get under the ball there. We didn't get under the ball, but that's okay. You want one more? Yes. I am editing this video because I don't trust you to take this stuff out. <laughs> I'm not. I'm taking it it's all It's part out. of it. It's not part of it. We're not perfect. This is the learning curve. This is what happens. You have to practice. Practice makes permanent. You're this thinking, is what's unnatural to me. I want to go like this, but I usually go like this. Yeah, and that's why you're not doing it well because this, you're thinking right? about all these things. What are we working on right now? And here's where... Accuracy. Okay, people are going to say I'm hard on her and everything, yada, da 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 all that. It's because I really want her to do well, okay? However... What are you talking about? You're talking about all this stuff, okay? Again, being super nice now. You understand being super nice? When did I ever tell you to think about all that? What is the you told one me to thing? to coil and uncoil what is the and one thing that we're, and pivot. What's the one thing that we're working on right now? Accuracy. Does so that have about power? anything to do with the take back? I'm trying to have a new serve. You're trying to get the ball to that bag right there. So forget everything else? I mean, it, it's crazy. It's all different than what I was doing. I'm telling you to hit here to walk and end up there and you're thinking about all this. No wonder yeah. why, and we're not going to take them out. The last three went into the net because you're thinking about all this nonsense. All you're going to do is when you're done, your serve could be like this, but once you're done, you're going to walk. I walk this way. I want it to end up right there. Okay. Keep working. <laughs> oh no, I, I, messed, I messed up her serve. <laughs> we're melting okay. down. Here's another big thing too with the take back, okay? Players, they think that you want the paddle already back. Now this is a little bit for consistency, maybe a little bit confidence, maybe power, but players think that the paddle's already back. When you're a beginner, you want the paddle already back because it eliminates this next component that you have to put into your serve. We'll go check the camera. Mm -hmm. So again, it eliminates this. So if you're a beginner, you're gonna take the paddle back and then you're gonna swing. If you are more advanced though, when your body goes back, that's when you want your paddle to go back. So when you lean back and rotate, then you wanna take the paddle back. So watch, I lean back and rotate, then I wanna take the paddle back. I wanna go lean back and rotate, then take the paddle back. We're struggling with that right now. Here we are, let's go. Lean back and rotate, then go. <laughs> okay, well you like cradled it, I'm not sure. What that was, you're like, <laughs> that's okay. Whoa, whoa. Let me try yeah, again. So what, Get I, out of my so what I want you to think is I want you to think <laughs> one, two, three. And one, what's happened? The ball three. never moves. The ball just stays here. No, but you're like tucking it in. I've never the ball seen ball never. I, like, does the ball come with my paddle or does the ball just stay here? I take the paddle back and I keep the hand out all the time. And you throw the ball. Okay. I keep the paddle back. 
Sorry, I'm supposed to acknowledge every single one of your co uh, comments because I don't want to get canceled on YouTube. So, to bring up that, um, sometimes I may throw the ball. However, you want to keep the ball out in front. Do as I say, not as I do. Let's get back to it, okay? Mm -hmm. So again, you want to keep the paddle back and you want to go one, two, three. You want to make it a continuous motion. A lot of players too, they struggle because they go one and then no. You go in one, two, three. You want a full continuous motion. That's going to help you if you don't already do that as well. Wow, look at that. that the good. moment that you add more variables, the moment that you stop, the moment that you're going to have more trouble and you're going to have so much more timing issues. If anyone knows any type of brand that can have a necklace that doesn't do this, please let me know. You need to keep the serve a continuous motion. Once again, if you want to take your serve to the next level, and this is for confidence as well, you need to make your serve as a continuous motion. So the great way to think is again, back, drop hit or one two three or breathe in okay? and you're so back time and yourself out. so for my serve back is one then drop and swing is two and then three is swing so one two three the moment that i drop the ball is when i swing but it's not here then i drop and swing it's one two three one two three it's not one two three or whatever um we did over there okay so make sure again when you serve i'm gonna take your spot real quick excuse me when we do it i like to say one two three or backdrop hit or just keep it going one two three oh, i gotta stay four one two three and there is a good serve so keep it continuous now another thing that you can do for accuracy and another great tip is that you can stare at your target let's see that's keep uh, it's rolling still okay a great tip that I used to do, and Michelle might not like me to mention this, but I uh, paid for half my college with bowling. I used to be a great bowler. Now, apparently Michelle says that she beats me all the time when I we do. go on dates now. One's last yeah, time you beat me That's because I didn't have my customized ball and I didn't have my customized thumb hole and everything. I need my equipment, but that's kind of nerdy, so like I would never pull up to Michelle and beat her with my equipment. However, she does beat me in bowling now. However, when you bowled a spare, if you ever have a spare in bowling, and I took actually O'Hara, where you went to high school at, mm -hmm. an O'Hara bowling summer camp. I surely was So there. cool. <laughs> bowling summer camp for like 9 to 12 every single day. I think his name was Mike. So much fun. We would have a bowling summer camp, and like they would set up spares, and we had to hit them. It was like bowling boot camp. And what a lot of players do is they just hope to throw the ball there. Mm -hmm. But what they taught you is you literally hold the bowling ball, you stare at your target, then you look back, then you stare at your target, and then you go to it. Oh, that's been a, that's been a while. I was nowhere near it. But by staring at your target, then looking back, and then staring forward, that's going to align your vision and your momentum towards it. Now. Well, you told me you want to keep your head down, body down, everything like that. User one, two, three. You suck at coaching. Quit coaching. Take this video down. What did I say at the beginning of this video? Different tips work for different people. Not one size fits all. So maybe try the momentum if that works. Maybe try not to just cradle the ball. That could help too. But another thing that you can do again is stare at the target, look back, stare at the target again. And then you're going to go, oh, I got to do it again. Come on, one more. Here we are. Again, I'm going to stare at the target. I'm going to stare back. Stare. I looked at that truck going by. Here we are. Stare at the target. Look back. Stare. Wow, there we so are. so good at bowling, Ty. Let's go. So we're going to go again. We're going to try to go out wide, and you're going to try to do the stare oh, looking me? back. Oh, me? I don't think that's I don't think you're going to like this because you're stare. horrible at bowling, and I, I, I let you in every single time. I don't even time. need a stare to beat you. <laughs> How about that? Here we are. So stare. <laughs> look. Stare. And then what am I doing? What's look back. Thing? No, not look, look at me. Like, I know you want to look at this beautiful face. However, stare that way. Uh -huh. Now look back at your paddle. Oh. Now stare back. Mm -hmm. Now go serve. Keep staring at serve. Don't don't look Go. down. Surf. Come on. Oh, you looked at me. Do it again. Right, I got it. So one, stare. two, three. Stare. Yep. Look down. <laughs> you always want to give it two or three times before you say that tip is trash, by the way. Ooh, look at that out wide serve. Amazing. It's not trash. I'm just not used to doing it. Okay, so that's I might do it if I find someone I'm playing next weekend that I do not like. Like I'll just stare, so just stare right into down. her soul. So that's another thing too. If you're playing a tournament and you're really um high energy and wanna like 
high energy. Get competitive or whatever you're nice trying to, to do. That's a nice way to put it there, babe. Um, again, I'm trying to be... High energy. High energy. What you can do is you can stare high at your sass. opponent, intimidate them, then look at a ball, stare at them. They're going to think you're crazy. However, you just watch Universal Rackets uh, pick a ball instantly and serve, improve your serve pick a ball video. However, you could intimidate them and win the point. Of I course. might hit them with a karate kid too. Don't even look back. Just stare at them and serve. That's perfect. Okay. So again, by aiming accuracy, wherever you point your momentum to, your body flowing forward, your follow through, your paddle, your head, your vision, that will help you aim in pickleball. There's three places, down the tee, in the middle, out wide. Different things can set up or you could utilize different types of placement to serve based upon different intentions, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is talk about depth because if you have an amazing serve, depth is greater than power. The reason why you want depth on your serve, and you could check the camera real quick while I'm talking, is if I'm the returner and Michelle serves me a deep ball, I'm going to hit my ball back here, not only it is more difficult, but then the next shot that I hit as the returner, the fourth shot, I'm going to be in the transition zone or I'm not going to be up at the kitchen. If you hit me a super short serve, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit it and now I'm going to be closer up to the kitchen. By serving deep, that's going to allow your opponents to have a more difficult shot. It's going to keep them further back and you're going to win way more points. And the likelihood of you getting any benefit off of serving short is super small. Yes. Don't really try it unless you're like up 10-0. 10-0. You just want to get fancy. But like for the majority of your serves, you want to paint this line because it keeps them back far away from the kitchen. It could even have them give you a real soft, weak return in which you can pummel back. The lower of a level you are, the more effective the powerful serve is going to be. The higher up you get in pickleball level wise, the less effective that the powerful serve will be because the returners will have be able to hit that shot back. Also, the second thing is, is the faster you hit the ball, the faster it comes back. Right. So court position wise, the more you can keep it deep, the more the ball, when the ball's up in the air, what does that mean? Especially for the serve and the third shot is your opponent can't hit it. Right. So while that ball is up in the air, you can move up. However, though, that's for the returner because for the server, you have to stay back for your third shot. Yeah. Wow. Well, we also just need to remember here, this has been a lengthy video with a lot of great information in it. In pickleball, most points are not won off of the serve. Yes. What it does is it sets your team up for success to have an advantage in the point. Your goal of your serve should be keep the returner deep. Yeah. And again, the further you get in the pickleball, there's really not aces. There's really not that many free mm -hmm. points in pickleball. You see the pros sometimes, some pros, some high level pros, it looks like they're not even really doing anything with the serve, which yeah. they are, but they could hit so much more harder, but it's not about the, the speed of the serve. It's about the placement. It's about the depth. So how do we right. get serves deep? I want you to think. Before we talk about hitting hard, hitting through the court, we are swinging forward and throw. If I want to get more depth, I want to swing more up. The more that you can lift the ball, the more depth you are going to get. Mm -hmm. the, you have to hold the paddle loose because if you don't hold the paddle loose and you try to lift the ball, it's not going to work. So by getting depth, you're going to load on your back leg and now instead of finishing forward, you're going to finish forward and up. So once I'm done, I want to pick my body up. I want my head still forward, mm -hmm. but I want my body to be up. Again, when I serve, I'm going to lift and pick my body up, but still keep my head forward. Another thing that you can think about for depth is you are getting below the ball. I want you to think horizontals this way, verticals this way. You want to swing more from six to 12. Mm -hmm. Another thing, by staring deep at the baseline, this is kind of like that bowling tip for accuracy, it's going to allow you before your serve, it's going to make you hit deeper. Right. Try it. Don't uh, knock it till you try it. It actually works. So again, I'm going to think about swinging up. I'm going to think about lifting the ball. I'm going to think about swinging from six to 12. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stare at that line. Here we are. I hit because my height, the net is exactly on that line for me. However, when I do, I'm going to stare there and then I'm going to go up and then I'm going to hit that deep serve. Right. Another way to think about your serve too is 
for me, when you first had me serve, and I know this about my game because I play quite often, is I know that I typically have a pretty deep serve. Want to know why? Because I'm lifting. Remember I was saying I was having trouble keeping my body down yes. for power? Because I lift my body and my serve, and that's why my serves are deep, which is good, but they lack power. So I'm gonna take the tips that I learned from Tyler on power, which I feel like my number one is gonna be on that rotation and holding the paddle loose to get under the ball. So just think about what you do in your serve. Is your serve short and weak? If so, use all these tips. Do you already have a deep serve? Maybe keep my body more of like in an upward position to keep my depth, but also use other things to generate power. So know what you're working with, know what you're, where you're starting. Don't just completely give up everything and just try a new serve like I did say, and it goes off the court. Because the last thing we want is the serve not to go in, because then you're just giving up your chances. Yeah. The number one thing is get the ball in, yeah. right? No matter what, because again, there's really not that much that a returner can do to a certain extent. If you're playing at a low level, of pickleball. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is if you serve just like this and get the ball in, which is the number one thing, because you don't get two tries in pickleball. There's no do-overs like in tennis. You get the ball in, they're probably going to just hit the ball back. Now again, as you advance, you're going to need to build off that, but number right. one, the goal is to get the ball in. And that's why Universal Rackets, when we teach pickleball, all our beginner clinics, shout out Universal Rackets, we run pickleball programming all over New Jersey, Philadelphia area, make sure to check out a clinic. Yeah. Paddle back, ball out in front, point the tip of the paddle forward. Again, paddle back, ball out in front, point the tip of the paddle forward. And that's just gonna get your ball in and you're gonna have a serve by that way. Yeah. Now to build off of that, you take everything else we said. And you that. put all this stuff together. Right. But again, you wanna start the number one priority is getting that ball in, paddle back, ball out in front, point the tip of the paddle forward, and then you build off of it. Yeah. So consider all these tips based upon your level and apply them accordingly. Yes, and then for me in my serve, since we were looking at me learning today, I never think about accuracy. I never think about where I want the serve to go. I could see if like someone's standing one side to the other and I can kind of like in my brain think, oh, I want to go up the middle, but I never realized that walking to that target was going to give me the answer as to where the ball needs to go. So that's something that never existed in my serve, never really thought too much about it, but now I can add it in and become a better player. Yeah, for sure. So that's depth, we went over depth, so we went over power, accuracy, depth. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to go over a little bit of spin and go over a little bit of confidence, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, with the spin, all we're going to teach you is a little bit about top spin. We have a whole video on how to hit a slice serve, so you guys can check that out. But rotation and acceleration equals power and spin. So the more you can let that paddle be loose, the more you can accelerate that paddle, the better it's going to be. So you really need to let that paddle go. Another great hack is by tilting the paddle downward, that's going to allow you to brush the back of the ball. Another hack is if you want your serve to have spin on it, when you finish, you wanna point the tip of the paddle facing up. So again, when I serve, if I wanna hit a flat serve, watch once I'm done, I can balance something on the paddle of my, uh, on my paddle. When I hit top spin, the tip of my paddle is pointing upward. So again, by pointing the tip of my paddle upward, that's going to allow me to have spin. Yes. Think that you're getting below the ball again. Think that you're accelerating. Tilt the paddle down. Finish with your paddle tip up, and that's going to give you top spin. Do you have anything else about spin while I go and check the camera? No, just I just keep thinking about myself again for my serve, and I will never have top spin, and you won't either if you hold the paddle tight because you can't get under the ball if your paddle is like this. You just can't do it. You'll start dropping your shoulder and compensating. If you go like this and you loosen up your grip, then you can take your paddle and drop it so it can brush up on the ball and then your follow throughs here, like Tyler said. All holding the paddle loose. Now, it's getting hot. It's we hot. went over so many tips, so many tricks. We've been out here for a while now. Yeah. Tons of things to try, but now we want to give you confidence. We want to close out with confidence. So the number one way for confidence is practice equals permanent. Go out, drill over and over and over again, put you in situations with the serve, not just in open play competitive settings, and that's going to help you. Get a ton of balls, click our link in the description, buy a paddle, get something with a gift card with purchase. You could use the gift card for the balls because they're always a little bit cheaper, or just get balls and then use a gift card for another thing. Amazing link in the description. But repeat and practice. The next thing, players, when you're playing your friend, when you're down, when it's competitive, you get tight, 
you need to have a serving routine. I want every single player, if you want to instantly improve your serve, regardless of what serve you have, you need to make sure that you always have a routine. And what I mean by that, come over here real quick. Too many players, what they do is they'll serve, they'll serve, they'll serve, then they'll play next point, they'll serve, everything like that. No, for me, I like to bounce the ball like this twice, then I take a deep breath, then I serve. Michelle, maybe, she'll like to toss it up, spin around, and then go and serve. Do you even have a serve routine, Michelle? Remember we talked to Ryan Sherry about the run-up serve? Oh yeah, Annalee did. you were saying how Annalise stood back I was like, did ran. you see a run-up serve? He's like, I don't care about a run-up serve. You can do this for all I care, and then serve it. Yeah, I think he actually tried to do it, did he? I'm not sure. I don't know. It was funny though, because it doesn't matter what you do before you serve, but you as need long as you have, have your thing. Some type of routine, because it's going to get tight. It's going to be a 9, 9, 10. You're going to be a 2. If you lose, it's going to be a side out. You need something that you can fall back to, that you revert to. If you watch Ben Johns, Ben Johns, I feel like, does this. Every single server. I like the ones where they go through the legs. Yeah, like this. I can't do that because I couldn't or do that consistently. Or backwards to frontwards because you weren't a baller. You need something <laughs> to get into a routine and calm your mind. So I want you to think. You could do two paddle bounces or three and then go. You could do two ball bounces. I like to do the paddle because the ball bounce on like a tennis ball. It doesn't go all the way up. Then you go and serve. Please, everyone, comment below what your serve routine is. What's your serve routine? Because I want to hear. I do two. I do two ball bounces. Let's say. With my hand, though. One, two. And if you ever feel like you're getting out of whack, mm -hmm. all you do is revert to your serve routine. Is there anything else that you want to add in this video? I did want to add something, but. It is relevant here. So say I am server one and you're, not, and you're server number two, right? I miss my serve. Instead of you getting mad, you have to have kind of like a mantra that kind of like erases your memory. When you play pickleball, you want to have the memory of a goldfish. You want to let everything go. You don't want to remember the serve that you just missed into the net at 9-10. So to let it all go, and they do this in tennis, you check your strings, right? So you miss your serve, come back to your paddle, and give the ball to your partner and then yeah. just move on and forget about it. Yes, or give it's, your partner that's a like, paddle tap. That could like really change everything in your game. If you could literally just forget anything bad that ever happens. You have to keep your memory short. Yep, goldfish. Because the thing There's is no where memory. players go wrong is they'll lose one point, then they'll think about that point, they'll lose four more points, and then it's already 11-0. Like when you hit a drive that goes too long, yep. you always miss your serve next. Yeah. Every single time. Or when you hit a drive that's too good. That happens for me. I'll hit my best shot. And if I'm ever serving when I hit like, oh my God, that's amazing. Put it on ESPN shot. Up the line. Yeah, like whatever. The serve, I'll miss because what am I doing? I'm thinking I'm all about hyped. that point. I'm excited about that point And I don't think about my serve. So you have to make sure that you focus on every single one. Use the routine. Use this that Michelle said. Use the partner paddle tap. Yeah. Different mechanisms and different rituals mm -hmm. to get back into the point and stay focused. Yeah. Now. If this video didn't help you improve your serve, just, just get out. Yeah, just get out. <laughs> Leave our channel. Just get out of here. Never come back. And <laughs> yeah, basically, I hope this video improved your serve. We gave you so many different tips and tricks. Try all of them. Rewatch it. Write them all down. Just cross them out. Do this one. If you like it, maybe put a check mark. We if didn't you don't, get star. through to the open stand serve, but really, it's all the same mechanics except for your feet are lined up square to the court. Yeah. Except for the open stance, you're loading. Maybe we'll do a whole video on that. I think yeah. that would be good. I switched for a moment to an open stance for a while, but we decided I had no power. Show us your open stance. It's been a minute. Yeah, so instead of loading back here, you're loading on this back leg. Look at that. But I need that rotation to get that power. I need more rotation for power for me. So that's why I went back. I can use all these tips. And Hopefully, get a medal. And instantly improve your serve. <laughs> guys, if you guys like this video, don't share it with your opponents, number one. Don't do it. Don't share it with any of your competition. Don't share it with anyone in Michelle's bracket in the uh, Miami Open. Thanks. However, though, make sure to share it with your friends. Make sure to share it with your family. And make sure to spread the word. Oh, we have a giveaway. Enjoy this. We're doing a giveaway. We're Launching doing today. a way. Announcing today. We're actually doing two giveaways. I'm doing a giveaway that I'm giving away a Selkirk uh, Vanguard Control Pickleball Paddle. Mm -hmm. And Michelle is announcing today that she is giving away another 
Selkirk Vanguard Control Pickleball Paddle. So you have two chances to win two pickleball paddles. And if you don't win, click the link in the description. Use our promo code ADV-Universal to get a gift card with any of your purchase so you could get all those pickleballs after you get the paddle to serve. If you want any type of Universal Rackets program, make sure to click the, the link in the description. Fill out a Google form. Have a good one. Happy hitting. Make sure we'll put the links to our giveaways. First up, subscribe, share. And if you listen to this whole entire video, I said to comment your serve routine. And if you've done that, you're already getting a bonus entry into my giveaway. So if you enter the giveaway, you have to comment on any YouTube and subscribe. And then you get an extra entry. So have a good one. Good luck in the giveaway. Make sure to enter it. Happy serving. Utilize all these tips. And we will see you guys next time on court.